and part of winning for me isn't just like winning the thing that I demand, but part of winning is also losing. Black people um, and queer folks and marginalized people, like I believe in us so deeply. I believe in our ability to not just survive, but to thrive. We're not just victims of something, we are survivors, we are resilient, um, and we always have been. I do call myself a leader. I don't use that word often, but I would call myself a leader. I wouldn't shy away from calling myself a leader. Well, my mother has, my mother has always said that I've been extremely um, bossy, that's what she says. She has, she has to remind me who the mom is. I don't know how to stop. <laughs> like, if there's a goal or a thing, something I need to accomplish, like I'm pretty driven, like that's what's gonna happen. Um, and I'm gonna figure out the resources to make it happen. And the more I win, the more I wanna win. Knowing that there have been people before me, whether it's people who are alive or past that have fought 100 times harder <laughs> against some of the greatest, some of our most greatest enemies and that they won. We are actually the ones in power. Like that, that's what's become super clear to me over the last, you know, 17 years that I've been doing this work. The literal power belongs in the people. We believe that we're part of a black liberation movement that has existed for the last 500 years. Many say we started the movement. That's, um, that's not true. What we've start, what we've um, continued um, is this iteration of the movement um, and we've amplified it amplified it just because the media isn't recognizing our movement doesn't mean it doesn't exist I don't I can't imagine racial equality happening in this lifetime it's so part of our fight is really a fight to transform this entire country and to um, challenge its very infrastructure I would have never been able to imagine this current moment, whether that is the, the birth of Black Lives Matter and what it's been able to do for the globe, or even the rise of white nationalists and white supremacists and Donald Trump. I didn't imagine that in the fight. Um, I didn't imagine that I would be called a terrorist, or my organization would be called a terrorist organization or that people would petition for us to be called a terrorist organization. When 45 says, you know, there's fine people out in Charlottesville, but doesn't actually condemn white supremacy, then you're instigating. Um, when, you know, 45 goes to Puerto Rico and throws paper towels at the community, he's revealing, right? Like he's revealing what white privilege actually looks like. The underbelly is not so under. Sure, there's white supremacists in the Antelope Valley, there's white supremacists in San Bernardino County, um, but I'm not walking outside of my house thinking that I'm gonna be struck by white supremacists necessarily. Uh, but then you go to some place like Missouri, or you go to a place like Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they're like, y'all, we've been dealing with this for a very long time. The Klan does regular rallies every summer, right? And then you start to see, oh, this, for some of us in that country, this is regular, this is their, this is normal life. And for others of us, we are kind of being, we, we are seeing, this is a, re a revelatory moment for us and how we challenge and stand up for what's already been happening in this country.